Hi, welcome to the 6502 show. Today, we're going to take a look at how to have some fun with a single board computer that only has one Riot, Via, or Pia chip, and we're going to brush up on our Morse code skills as well. I was looking around for something fun to do with my pal one, and I was looking through the first book of Kim, and I came to Code Test by Stan Ockers. Really interesting program. Being a ham, I thought, hey, I could sure use some practice with Morse. I do things like switch D and U around in my head, X and P, all the time. So code practice would be good for me, certainly. You know, out here on the West Coast sometimes, you don't hear W1AW, though the way they transmit, it's hard not to hear them. Anyway, enough editorializing. This looked pretty good. And after I glanced through the code a little bit, I thought, hey, this ought to work. Now a few words about the unexpanded PAL-1, and by extension, the microchim. You'll notice here that there are some optional things on the memory map. For example... There's some RAM space here that is really kind of difficult to use the way things are set up. So it's just kind of this open space. Nothing's there. But you'll also notice right here, 6532 IO and timer optional. From 1700 to 173 F, there should be some RAM there. There's nothing there. Uh, you have to install the RAM expansion card to get those, there were two 6530s on a Kim 1, but that's not what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with this, 1740 to 177F, and here we do have indeed a 6532 IO and timer riot chip. You do have, because it's been mapped in this way, you do have the 64 bytes of RAM that would have come with this. So that's where we get our 128 of Riot RAM on these replica boards. So we need to keep that in mind, especially right here, optional installed. Now looking over here at Appendix B, this is the expansion connector. And we can see down here that we have, lo and behold, a line. <laughs> for our 6532 Riot chip that is on board. And we can use that. And that is that works both in and out. It isn't just an output port for cassette saves. It needed to be there so that the cassette would work. And that's why it was brought out to the expansion connector. However, there's no reason we can't use it for other stuff. and. In the program Melody Maker that I showed a number of months ago, Jim Butterfield took advantage of that fact right there and used that line to output musical tones. Well, we can also turn it in. We can put our own output in it. You know, uh, whatever we would like to do, we can certainly do that. So let's move over and take a look at the source code. Here we have Jeff Tranter's transcription of Code Test, and there are a few things we need to note right off the bat. Right here, we are storing into the accumulator whatever is in E2 indexed by X. These leading zeros can be a problem for some assemblers, so be aware of that. Uh, 64 tasks, no problems, go ahead but uh, yours might add some extra bytes in there that we won't want because they're not in the original. And it'll throw things off much later. And as you can tell, this uh, happens a lot. Another thing we need to look at is farther down in the code and at the mark subroutine when we're going to output a sound. What, we're, uh, st what Stan used 
is PA0, setting that to output, and then uh, just toggle the line. And we're going to do it so many times to get a certain frequency. And then we're checking an interval timer. And then we're done. However, in an unexpanded PAL1 or microchem, you don't have these addresses. They're not available to you. You need a Riot expansion board to make that happen. These are optional, as we saw earlier, in uh, some of the things that we were going to have to consider. So those will have to be changed. Um, so this is the timer and using PA0, which we can't use anyway. So, uh, and otherwise, we're just, this is fine because uh, that was set earlier to this location, which we do have. And that's going to turn our LED display on and then output the code groups that we attempted to copy. And that's uh, Stan's note right there from the original. And here are all the different values. It's worth talking about um, these code characters and display conversions. It's really clever how this was put together. Uh, Stan borrowed from an article in Byte magazine in 1976 and used this way to uh, compact Morse code characters so that the bits being either on or off determine if you've got a dot or a dash. Down here are the characters that we're going to display. And I'll go into that a little bit later on, but these are our custom character set that we're going to have for our LED outputs. So we've got this here code and we've got to do something with it. And that's what we've done with it. Instead of using PAD, we're gonna use PB at this address and the uh, accompanying data direction register that goes with it. And the other thing that we're gonna do, you notice I've taken these out because my assembler was one of the ones that add the extra byte. <laughs> you know, the only way to know is try it. But the other thing we need to change is uh, here in the mark subroutine where instead of storing stuff, and where are we over here? Okay, there we go. So instead of storing here and using this timer, rather that timer, we're going to change and use this timer that is in the Riot chip that we have on board on the unexpanded PAL or microchem. And then we're gonna use PB7. We've set that pin to output here the seven bit number seven and that use again the different timer and that's really all we need to change here uh, the timer address is also changed in the space subroutine display stays the same random numbers stay the same all the characters stay the same okay i've got the code all loaded in and we'll be ready to go here as soon as I type in the magic address and hit G. Ah, the sweet sound of Morse. Not that I can copy it this fast. Okay, we've sent our groups. And here's the first one. And there's the second one. The third group that got sent. Uh, okay, that's the fourth group. And that is what got sent the last time. Well, let's take a look at why some of those symbols look so strange. Here's a truth table for a common cathode seven segment LED. And as you can see, different numbers that you want to present require different hex codes. Well, especially looking at, say, the number 1 and the number 8, and 0 for that matter, we can kind of figure out what will light up each segment. 
Once we do that, we get something that looks a lot like this. And at that point, it's just addition. You're just adding stuff together, and that's the value you're going to use. If this was common anode, the bits would run the other direction, so you've got different codes. With the common cathode, you can also, if you do set the high bit, you can light up the decimal point, which might be cool someday if you're ever building a calculator. In the original First Book of Kim article, Stan adds some notes so that you can change the program to suit your needs or your tastes. Especially interesting to me is that location 2E3 contains the speed of the code practice transmission. And he has it set at 33, 16 words a minute. Hex 66 gives 8. Something tells me 99 might be more my speed. We'll see about the tone character. We might want to change that. We can also change to only send letters, and he provides a reference to Byte Magazine, October 1976, for details of how the Morse characters are stored. And we did mention that, I believe, at one point, talking about how a character is packed into bits of a given byte and then assigned that number. And it's got some control bits as well, because it only takes, what, six bits to do anything in Morse? Pretty clever. Okay, I'm going to change this address, which is the speed of the code that is being sent, to something where I'll have a fighting chance. This is about 16 words a minute. I need to knock that down a little bit. All right. Let's make sure I got that in there properly. B0. I, I think I have a fighting chance with this. All right, we're ready to run. And here we go. Well, here's what I got. It's probably not going to be very good, but let's uh, see if we can decipher some of the crazy letters here. Uh, I got one. I got one. I got nothing. I think I got two. I got three. Really difficult to understand some of these characters. While a second riot chip would be ideal in the PAL Warner Microchem, you can still have a lot of fun and do some I.O. experiments with just the one that's on board. Well, I hope you had a good time watching the 6502 show today. And if you did, please like and subscribe to this video. That would be swell. I'd appreciate it. 
So until we see each other again, take care. Thank you.